Okay, I want to do a, a quick discussion about something that Devin Nash mentioned that really ticked me off, and that is the idea that your content automatically sucks if nobody watches it. So right now, of course, I'm a bump on a log on Twitch, barely done anything, barely have any viewers, and Twitch is infamous for not having a lot of algorithms to introduce you to new people, and even if they did, the people would have to decide to watch you instead of somebody else. Some of what's in play with Twitch is basically live streaming's shortcomings in general versus YouTube videos, which is one of the reasons why this quiet bump on a log stream is usually turned into YouTube videos after the fact. Because, quite frankly, it's a great way to just speak your mind and make videos about stuff, and OBS does a better job for this stuff than most YouTube setups that I've had over the years of this kind of stuff. But I want to talk about just the simple idea of your content not sucking if you don't have any viewers. There are three elements to social media. And you know what? I think I've just been, I think I have to do PowerPoint now. Sorry. Oh, man. I'm going to be doing this again tomorrow, or maybe I'll just keep the graphics or something. All right. So here you are. This is you. Let's edit some text in here. Here it is. This is you and your content. So this is you and your content. So why don't we uh, pick some colors here? Can we do this? Oh, we don't want to do that. Undo, please. Undo. Ah. Uh, Taking new egg colors there. So let me see. Let me just do this and let's change over to home. Let's bold it and put a shadow under it and blow it up a little. All right. So you come onto these platforms and it is you and your content. Give me a duplicate of that. We'll set a new color for it. Put this over here and we are going to have people. So this is you and your content. We're going to have people as our second sphere here let's just change our colors over here where is fill color that's what it is we're gonna change let's set people as the green or set the color to green for people come on i just had it all right here's people here's you and your content let's take a pick a fill color here that isn't too bizarre well let's see here we'll go with this now in the middle of all of this so your objective, take that out, let's, let's uh, deal with the people thing later. Your objective, of course, is for people to watch you and your content, or you and your content. <laughs> you and your content. There we go. If I can even say anything at this dreadful hour. <laughs> so the point is to get people to watch your content. Now, if this was the olden days, and this is the thing, this is where we're getting to the part where the commentators who are all narcissistic towards people tend to ignore this little bit here. In the olden days, you would do an ad campaign, you'd run commercials, you'd raise publicity, you'd have a publicity campaign, and you would raise awareness of what it was that you were doing. Oh, there's little things you can snap things to, to have it in the same general spot. Ah, not that. Come on, PowerPoint. So, yeah, let's put this here. Yeah, this, this is awesome. Ah, oh, not the pattern. It's not your grandpa's PowerPoint, that's for sure. So here's you and your content in people. So previously in the olden days, you would have wanted to introduce people to your content, give them a reason to watch, give them a reason to keep coming back. Today, however, we have something in the middle, and this is social media in action. So we're going to do blood red here because this can be what destroys you completely, and that is technology. And actually, let's just shut that, you know, cut down the size of the font so it all fits. Here we go. Right here. This is what social media... Hey, full screen it. Does it go full screen if we do this? <laughs> Except I... Uh, yeah, I actually get... No. <laughs> so, it was worth a shot. We'll close the ribbon and close the sidebar here. So, your typical platform like Twitch and YouTube that has algorithms is like this. You and your content are here, the people are here, whether or not they choose to watch your content is on them. However, the thing in the middle is always the technology. On YouTube, this is algorithms. This is algorithms and stuff. Whether or not the algorithms pass your content around. And the question is, what sort of stuff does YouTube want to pass around? And of course, there is an answer to that. There, the answer, of course, would be things like ad-friendly content, family-friendly content, and I also say 
ad dollar friendly content. So content that doesn't get a lot of ad blockers because ad blocking technology is the bane of the ad model on YouTube. And what I've seen from my own channel for years now is that the stuff that the stuff that gets the views is what earns YouTube the most money may not necessarily be what I like making the most, but it just goes and goes and goes and it finds an endless audience month after month, usually with at least 1,500 to two. In the case of the dryer video, you're talking 1,500 to 2,000 views every single month for a video that's five, nearly five years old at this point. Why does that happen? Technology, the algorithm is among all of my content. The stuff that's passed the most by the algorithm is the stuff that makes the most money. So this is it. And at the same token, if YouTube gets a little stuffy, they can shut off your ability to have an audience. And this is what gets in the way when we talk about this thing that people are saying, that, oh, don't bother with Twitch. Just go to YouTube, make YouTube videos, get known on YouTube and bring the audience back to Twitch. YouTube is not, and it never will be, the cure-all to a broken platform. If Twitch doesn't work right, you know, that's a problem. That's a Twitch problem. But what we have here with technology is people don't talk about this part of it. So this is probably the easiest way that you can know that you may not be the problem. You might not be the problem if nobody's watching your content. So this idea floating around out there that if nobody's watching your content, it automatically means your content sucks is way too simple minded. Another element of this, hey, let's make another slide. <laughs> well, let's just have some fun with this. Another element of this, zing. <laughs> Actually, I should make this the format for all of this. Another element of this, give me my format painter so I can bring over the background to this slide. Another element of this is two things, zing. <laughs> another element of this, if we insert a text box here, see, yep. Two words that people seem to have a really hard time with, objective and subjective. When you say somebody's content sucks, what you're doing is you're making a subjective statement. It's based on something you internally believe, and it's not based on objective reality that other people can verify for themselves. There we go. Oh, that, that might be a little too big. Let's go back here and let's bring this back down a notch. There we go. Let's bring this back down a notch here. Objective versus subjective. So objective is something that you can go out and see for yourself. Subjective is something that you internally believe. When I tell you your content sucks, if I don't like your content, I'm just telling you my opinion. It doesn't say anything objective about what it is that you're doing. So that's the issue with all of this here. Now, if I want to get objective, I can say things like your camera is fuzzy or your microphone sounds terrible or you don't have any show flow. You're not exhibiting any charisma or well, in the case of show flow, it has nothing to do with charisma. Show flow is just do you know what you're doing when the cameras go live and how good are you at making at, you know, making sure that other people aren't feeling like they're wasting their time watching your show. A great example of bad show flow would be all of these streamers that keep, as they say, stalling or they nothing's working right when they go on stream so they just crack jokes about their own inability to stream properly when ever when what they what people are tuning in for isn't happening because some camera's not working or something like that some people make a joke out of all of this but that's really the issue that we face here is show flow matters and that's one of the key differences between YouTube and live streaming as well. YouTube is about show flow because you can edit out all the dull bits or stuff like what I just did there where I didn't know what I wanted to say. And so you can take something that would otherwise be like an hour plus, cut it down to 15 minutes or so, and people will like it a lot better because you say more in 15 minutes than some live streams say in an hour. But getting back to our point about objective versus subjective. So when you say my content sucks because I have no viewers, you're not saying anything objective about the content whatsoever. You're saying a subjective opinion, your opinion that my content sucks. You're not saying anything that is actually going to give me useful feedback. 
So saying something sucks is never useful feedback. And I know we're, we're, I'm kind of betraying my 90s influence here and having brushed with Generation X and the Beavis and Butthead generation. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> and stuff like that. But I am looking to take aim at this idea that your content sucks if you don't have any viewers. So the idea of something sucking, according to the Beavis and Butthead generation, is just a subjective statement of someone's opinion. They don't like you. That's basically what that means. Or they don't like your video or something like that. Or they don't like your live stream. Whatever. There's nothing you can really do about somebody who doesn't like you because they, the people have to change their mind. That's the difference here. You can't do anything about, you can't do anything about, oh, your content sucks. But if someone says to you that your camera's fuzzy or you don't, your camera doesn't look all that great or you can get a better microphone and sound better or maybe you have a good microphone, you're not making good use of it because you're not using the right filters or anything. Like if, if I was doing raw audio in OBS instead of compressing away Let's go back to camera and graphics here. If I, instead of noise gating out, I should say the air conditioner that's been going the entire time that I've been recording this. If I didn't do that, you could give me objective feedback that there's stuff in OBS that I can use. So you see what the difference is here? Objective stuff, number one, other people can see it, which means I can see for myself that you're correct. It's not just an argument of me versus you, but it also gives me a way to improve. It also gives me something that I can do to improve everything. Whereas if you don't like me, there's nothing I can do about that. You have to be the one to change your mind. And that's that gets back to our little discussion about you and your content, technology, and people as well. You can make great content. The technology can push that content. But ultimately, the people have to decide to support you. This people element, and let's make another slide here, and let's just put it in the middle. This people element is overlooked by so many folks in so many places. And autosave, not to do that. So there we go. Let's bring our little thing over here. So let's let's zoom in on this whole people thing. People are more in charge and they have more of an influence on things than many of us want to give them credit for. Uh, let's see, I want this to be properly sized. So let's do this to the center and let's put this right here. There we go. And let's blow up the text to about size 200 or so. But here you are. As a content creator, this is your real boss. The technology can get in the way of people seeing your stuff. But when the people do see your stuff, that is when everything is either made or broken. And we give ourselves and we give this this people element of things so little credit. It takes it takes cynical people like my stepmother, for example, she has this saying, it's all because of people. And what she means is that everything that annoys her is probably because of people. But if we look at that from a more philosophical standpoint, people make or break you in so many ways, and we don't want to give them credit for it. So going back to this, you make great content, the technology serves it, people don't watch it, or they don't like it or you have the wrong people watching, or the people that the technology serves your content to aren't interested. That's technically a failure on the part of the technology, but what breaks the entire process of you and your content getting seen is the people deciding they're not interested. So, and it's the same thing too. You go to get a job, give me a duplicate of this, Ah, why can't I just, I should have just made the template earlier to always have that blue in the background. Even when I copy paste everything, it's not taking the background color over. Should have just made that, should have just go into the slide master and change the, the color of the slides there. But here you are. This is you. Let's see, you, you are going to a job interview and people in this case is the hiring manager. Now, one of the things that we, that we give people the impression of when it comes to finding a job is that something other than people gets you the job. And that is patently false. We have this idea out there that if you get enough credentials, enough skills, enough degrees, and you have to bring enough charisma to the interview, you will get the job. And that is 100% false. 
whether no matter what you do, no matter what background you have, no matter how good you do in the interview, ultimately it's the people that make the decision. And it may not be the most logical decision. You could be discriminated against. They could play nepotism and hire one of their friends. Or you could have a hiring manager on the other side of that interview table who is scared of talented subordinates. And so the minute you show that you would actually be good and you might challenge them as their man as being a manager and you might be too hot to handle because they're afraid of talented people you're not getting that job doesn't matter what your background is doesn't matter what your background is at all or your skills or your degrees or anything the person making the hiring decision has decided you are not joining that team now here's where it goes wrong just like with when people say, oh, your content sucks because no one's watching it. You may want to think there's something wrong with you when in reality, the problem happened with the people. That's the problem. You're not the problem. They are. They're the ones that decided to discriminate against you, to be a nepotist and hire their friends, or they don't want talented people. And then maybe they turn around and cry, I can't find good help. The business is struggling. It's so hard running this business. It's so hard being in charge. No, classic victim blaming stuff. What does any of that have to do with you? Nothing. It is them. They're the problem. And so we let's go back to social media. So right now, so you and your content, okay, great. Technology serves it. People are themselves. If they do something that upsets you, it doesn't reflect on you and it doesn't reflect on your content. Bottom line, the only problem your content is going to have is with the content itself. If you have a fuzzy camera or fuzzy microphone or something, or if you don't have any charisma, you're not entertaining, you're not putting on a show, but that's all stuff you can control and you can get better at. You can practice until you get better at it. But if people decide to not support you, it's on them. It doesn't reflect on you. It just means you failed basically at demographics. The people you have watching that the technology is serving your content to are not good people. And this is what I ran into on YouTube. So I have a channel that has been multimedia stuff since 2006. Somewhere around 2012, 2013, I had a bunch of computer folks show up because I was tinkering with computers a lot. But no matter how many times I said that my channel was about multimedia and not computers, it never changed these people's attitudes. And so nowadays I have an audience, if I even want to call them that, of people who pretend I don't exist if I'm not tinkering with computers all the time. And I can tell you that this is not a problem that other computer channels have, much less tech or multimedia channels. A great example of a YouTuber I take a lot of inspiration from is LGR. But LGR has an audience that continues supporting him when he goes from tech videos to gaming videos. I don't. And the same thing, too, with other channels like B Bishop, PCM, Paul's Hardware, places like that. They could change, there are channels out there that can change content and people still support them. Why? Good people. That's why. So people that disappear the minute you change even the tiniest thing are bad? They may be or they may not know it. I mean, when I talk about, for example, this type of stuff, early YouTube didn't have as much technology. So things were a lot cruder, and because of that, creators and people were closer together. Because of that, creators and people were closer together. So it was basically the video social media. In the day and age of MySpace being the dominant social media platform, the focus was largely on people and individuals. So when you went to a MySpace page, for example, if you went to somebody's MySpace page, I used to joke about colorblind MySpace because so many people just put random colors and whatnot, but it was their way of expressing themselves on their MySpace pages. And so MySpace was a place for friends. So it was all about people. Same thing with friends. Was it Friendster or whatnot? There was some predecessor to MySpace and whatnot. And then, of course, Facebook picked up where MySpace left off before Facebook Incorporated went 
focusing on algorithms and other stuff that was the proto version of what has broken YouTube nowadays. But in the early days of YouTube, it was about people and interactions and communities. People wouldn't sub to you because of the content you were making. Matter of fact, YouTube was known for having bad looking content when it was crippled by technical limitations. There are even comedians that said at one point that YouTube was a circular file of bad camcorder videos and user generated content. People weren't, people weren't subbing to you on YouTube because of your content. They were subbing because of you. You, your personality, your likableness and what you brought to the table. And that was the case with the big YouTubers as well. All the big vloggers, they had something about their personality or because they didn't have a lot of them didn't have good production value. A lot of them were just talking into webcams, sometimes 15 frame per second webcams that would barely even show what they were, you know, that would barely even show them properly. Many big vloggers that I followed in early YouTube actually recorded in black and white. Because the white balance in the camera and the color capture on the cameras they were using was so terrible that it actually looked better if they filmed all their vlogs in black and white. So there actually was kind of a black and white TV era on YouTube at one point. But as YouTube developed, they took out a lot of these community features like video responses and stuff like that that people were using to connect with one another. And then they brought in the technology algorithms coming between people in their audience breaking the meta tags so you can't really respond to people anymore on youtube you can't make a youtube video that responds to people anymore so the tag system originally wouldn't let let it happen nowadays the technology demonetization and even the harassment policy will not allow you to opine on someone else's content you're always putting yourself at risk when you talk about others in your YouTube videos these days, because an abusable system could mean strikes in your account. So people wonder what's changed about YouTube. This is, this is it right here. The technology now comes between you and your content and the people that could be watching it. Oh, YouTube doesn't agree with some viewpoint you have that you showed in one of your videos. They can downrank your content. They can shut you off, you know, then there's monetization and all the other stuff and things along those lines. But the point that I'm trying to make as five o'clock approaches here on the East Coast is quite simple. Just because you don't get views doesn't mean it's always your fault. You can, of course, make bad content and you may have bad people who don't know enough to tell you how to make it better, who will never actually give you the feedback you need to make your content better. In that case, you're kind of stuck. But just because you don't have any viewers doesn't necessarily mean it's always you. Technology can get in the way, like it does on YouTube, and ultimately people can just decide they're not gonna support you for whatever reason. And it may not even be anything malicious. Maybe they're just too busy. Maybe that audience of 500 views, views a video on YouTube that you got back in 2016 now works multiple jobs and has no time to watch anything anymore, so they vanish. So no matter what you upload, you never see them anymore. That's the thing. So, I hope this has been a rather simple discussion that is worth something to somebody. But these people that go around saying your content automatically sucks if you have no views, it's just not the case. There's a little something in play here called the logical fallacy of the false dilemma. Let's make another slide. The logical fallacy of the false dilemma, <laughs> I really should, just, should have just made a, made a template for this. The logical fallacy of the false dilemma is, if not this, definitely that. Let's let's just let's see. Let's bring that that down a little. False dilemma. If not this, zing. <laughs> Stop complaining. PowerPoint. I'm just using the program. If not this, then definitely that. The false dilemma focuses on. If, if outcome A isn't happening, it's automatically outcome B. There are no other explanations. And that is where this argument about if your content doesn't, if nobody watches your content, your content sucks, falls flat on its face because it is ignoring other possibilities such as technology not working right or you're just not meeting the right people. 
You don't have the right people tuning into your stream. You don't have the right people watching your videos on YouTube. It can happen. And the more we try to ignore the people side of this, the more we're sitting ducks to just how random people can be. People don't always have to make sense. They don't always have to be logical. They can be flat out hysterical sometimes. So there is no mathematical way of dealing with the people problem. People are inherently organic, so to speak. They're organic. They're inherently unpredictable. They can be random. They can take what you think is a plan that's going to execute very well and make your plan execute very poorly. So. But the key is when you run into problems because of people to understand that you're not the problem. And the same thing when you run into problems because of technology. Understand that it's not you that's the problem. It's this thing in the middle that's keeping you from having an audience. Or the audience that this thing in the middle is hooking you up with is not the right audience. I hope I've made my point clear. Because if I see one more video of some snooty commentator talking down to the very people that their videos are supposed to attract, I really don't know what I'm going to say. I really don't know what I'm going to think because it's crazy, you know? You present yourself as a self-styled expert on social media and stuff like this, and then you don't, maybe you don't even realize that you're talking down to the very people that you're supposed to be helping out. What's the point?